first thing I want to say in this match reaction is I promise I'm going to try and stay a bit level-headed. But I tell you what, if the first game against Liverpool was the first step on the ladder and the second game against Melbourne victory was the second step on the ladder and that's the third step, Jesus Christ, these steps, I like the look of this ladder. I like the way that we, <laughs> the way that we are heading under Eric Ten Hag. It's hard not to get excited watching Manchester United play the sort of football that you're going... I felt it was going to take a while for us to see something like that. But all three of those goals today, one by Martial, one by Rashford, one by Jadon Sancho, three completely different types of goals, three completely team-orientated, possession-based, patient build-up goals. Eh, in the row, maybe not patient is the wrong word to describe all three. But it's hard not to be excited about what we're seeing, right? Manchester United, 3-1 winners there against Crystal Palace. Of course, United are still conceded from set pieces, but when you've got... Uh, Alex Teller's playing as your left centre-back. That's probably going to happen. But in that game there, that first goal from Manchester United, Tyrell Malasia on the left-hand side. I think I've got a photo of it here. Tyrell Malasia on the left-hand side. He's fired a cross in over there to Diogo Delo on the right-hand side. By the way, both of the crosses on their weaker foot. Hmm, it's almost like Eric Ten Hag's drills inside that possession game. You know, the videos I've been doing where you face one way inside the box, then you flip you flip around and you face the other way, so you receive the ball on both feet. It's almost like the players are starting to get more confident playing with the ball at both feet. And then Delo, nice little chest down, knock out to the right foot, across to, Ma to Martial, and he bags another goal. Three goals in three games from Martial, from a Martial that just looks... Yeah, I'm, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> if I'm going to try and temper my excitement about Manchester United overall... I'm definitely tempering my excitement about Martial, but it's hard not to be. He's playing fantastically well today. He looks sharp. It's not just the goals he's scoring. And look, it's not just the goals he's scoring either. A goal there for Marcus Rashford. A goal there for Jadon Sancho. And of course, a goal for Martial. But in that first half, man, wow. Just the, re the, the repetitions of things that we saw against um, Liverpool and we saw against Melbourne victory. The same sort of patient build-up play. You saw Manchester United. I think what you looked at today, I think I might even do a separate video on this, quite a curious one. You saw Fred operating a bit deeper with McTominay and Bruno in front of him in the first half. And then it was Bruno and Van der Beek in front of him in the, in the second half. And Donny got himself an assist, which I know a lot of you will be excited about. But just the, the fluidity of it. Manchester United, Sancho and Rashford, they kind of switch flanks on occasion. But they switch flanks and it felt like they switch flanks with a purpose rather than just being told, oh, just occasionally switch because why not? They did it with purpose. Something I found really odd in that game, I'll be honest. Uh, Maguire being booed and then 20 minutes later, Maguire being cheered. I mean, what's the point? I can't... I sound like a bit of a hypocrite if I criticise these boos because I've heavily criticised Harry Maguire on this channel. But just uh, booing a player is just... It's a weird flex. I'll always consider it a weird flex. Uh, and yeah, I think Maguire actually probably... Played his best game, certainly in the preseason tour so far. Best I've seen in, in quite a while from Harry Maguire. He looked good. He looked better. Than, even, I would argue he looked a little bit better than Lindelof. You've got to praise players when they are due it. You've got to praise a manager when he is due that praise. Ten Hag's football is in full flow, is the little caption I've got down there. And it was exactly that. It's As I said, it's, it's the patterns of build-up play. The same things that we did in the first couple of games we saw again today. But that second goal in particular, the movement from Manchester United. David De Gea actually starting the goal with a nice little floated ball out to the left-hand side. Bruno and Malasia linking up, I think it was. Bruno has a look up. Boom. Lovely ball over the top to Martial. He takes it down, brings Sancho into play, who brings Van der... Oh, is it someone else? I think he brings Sancho into play. And then he brings Van der Beek into play. And again, we did the cutback. The cutback was there. And I tell you what, people are going to be really happy for Donny. And I, I'm fair play to Donny, man. He came on in that second half. And in the first half, I was a bit confused by what Matomane was doing. I said it before the game. I was trying to defend um, Fred. It's like you have, to, you have to isolate them. Fred and Matomane, they might meet McFred. They might come as one, but they come separately as, as <laughs> they come separately too. Uh, at Fred, I thought played pretty well again. That lovely pass that he had for Martial in the first half, the one that broke Jack Butlin's fingers, the shot. Well, hopefully he didn't. Well, I don't, know. I don't really care, but hopefully for him, he didn't. But just the movement for that second goal, the cutback. Again, cutbacks. Manchester United have created a repetition throughout this preseason tour of getting overlaps on the wings. And instead of just aimlessly head down, get a cross in, head up, get a cutback. 
And it's created like 10 plus opportunities of which we've scored a few of them. And Jaden Sancho, that goal today, passed through a lovely little pass around the corner from Martial. And I had real confidence. As soon as he went through, I'm like, yeah, Jaden Sancho scoring this. It really is. I, I, I had utter confidence he was going to score there. Not just saying that, Captain Hindsight and all that. Lovely little dimmy, sh little shimmy that, that, that brought the keeper down. He didn't even have to finish it with like a plumb into the corner. There was yards of space. Just a little measured, curved finish. And yeah, it, it's kind of hard to choose who's a man of match in that game. And I'll be completely honest there. I thought Diogo Delo really deserves credit. I thought Tyro Manasir, it's interesting that he got 75 minutes. I think that's pretty much a nod to the fact that Eric Ten Hag wants to get him ready for maybe starting that game against Brighton. I think the fact that he started there today kind of goes to show because he's, look, Delo has started pretty much, has he started every game? He started every game. Juan Bissaka is hardly getting a look in. I think you can pretty much guarantee that Delo's going to start in that game against Brighton. And the way that he's playing right now, you're absolutely starting Martial. And the fact that we don't actually have other centre forward, given that uh, Ronaldo's obviously missing with personal family issues. But all three of them today, Martial, Rashford and Sancho, it wasn't one player that stole the show. It was a collective team performance. And that's, that's the biggest takeaway I'm taking from that game. That, that wasn't a match which relied on any sort of... We talk about individual brilliance that Manchester United have relied on. Players getting us out of holes because as a team, we're not taking ourselves towards the victories that we've been aiming for. But today, it was just measured. First half finished 1-0. Could really have finished 3 or 4-0. Maguire hit the outside, that, that second post, holding the net up. We had a couple of chances. Martial, that shot that hurt Jack Butlin's fingers. A couple more chances too. And we just kept creating. The fact that we had a goal there in the first half that was made by both of our fullbacks crossing it to each other with their wrong foot. <laughs> Not crossing it to each other, but crossing it with their wrong foot. We haven't seen that for a while. Fullbacks offering that sort of threat in attack. We're not used to it. We haven't seen Manchester United doing it much. You see, as I say, I think Harry Maguire deserved credit for how he played in that game in the first half. And Ten Hag's got to be looking at that going, I like what I see. I'm continuing to see the consequence of top-level coaching. And that's coming down to Eric Ten Hag. That's coming down to the drills, the pre-season training, and everybody listening. Everybody taking it on board. That's why the idea of Ragnik to Ten Hag was a continuity that I could get behind. Because if the players are bought into Ragnik completely and started playing the pressing game, then it would have built into this. They didn't really do that. He didn't really have any authority. He was more like a substitute teacher. We know what happened there. But Rashford, right place, right time. Excellent cutback from Donny van der Beek. United on fire there. And then we're just breaking away and scoring the third goal. As I say, three different types of goals. First one, lovely bit of play from our fullbacks. Great finish. Second one, just a wonderful front to back from De Gea to the goal. Team move. Probably the best goal of the preseason so far, I would say. Third goal, a little bit more of a semi-counter attack. Breaking with pace accuracy and finesse and then just happy days man just happy feelings all around <laughs> i'm just it, as i say it's it's hard not to get actually no it's not hard not to get swept away because it's pre-season it's always easy to ground yourself there but just if we're building this trifle of pre-season obviously louis van Gaal, we kind of had a similar pre-season i think we smashed every team in that in that pre-season we lost our first game against swansea i think but it just feels different. It feels like this is really a product of top-level coaching and also just from what I'm seeing, from the, from the improvements in performances in Martial, Rashford and Sancho, in, in the performance, no, I wouldn't require Maguire and that just yet anyway, from just the improvements on every single player. We knew that this squad was a team of players that as a collective should have been playing better than they did last year, right? And now we're starting to see the fruits of top-level coaching when players are buying into the project. Everyone knows that it, there was a real deliberateness. That's not a word. But everything felt deliberate today. The passes, the movement, the runs. Everybody knew what they were doing, and they did it together. Real team performance there. 3-1. Real shame about the goal that went in. Second half, uh, you can understand that it dropped off. Alex Tellez, I think he's probably playing more as a left centre-back to... Kind of mimic what Lissandro Martinez will do in that role rather than thinking that Alex Tellez is going to be any sort of left centre back because he's not. He's definitely not. And De Gea should have done a hell of a lot more from that goal. I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on what I'm seeing. The football's in full flow, man. 
That, that If that game doesn't get to put a big smile on your face and the goals we scored in that game, well, you're not going to enjoy the season much. But I am. I enjoyed that. I've enjoyed all three preseason games so far. And we're just building and building and building. One step at a time, we're getting better and better and better. Bring on Aston Villa, man. I want to see what comes next.